Tonight, wise guy. We better get him to the hospital. I'm thinking of putting somebody else in. Who? The only man I know that even comes close to being in your league. Do I have to tell you what could happen to an agent who doesn't have complete cover? No, you do not. So then why'd you bother bringing me down here for this dog and pony show? Because you did not go out on a win, John. You took it too far too fast. You rattled his cage, now I've got to crawl in with him. to turn this trip into a David Sternberg version of the world of Susie Wong. Honey, help me with these, will you? Did you hear what I said, David? Yes, Dad. Okay. Did you get all your shots? Yesterday. And you've got your tickets? Tickets and passport. Don't let them use their Sri Lanka charm on you. Yes, Dad. Will you stop with the yes, Dad? I know what I'm talking about. You know what these people are going to do? They're going to have this ripe brown goddess with a tie tack sticking out of her nose. She's gonna clean your pipes, and then they're gonna let you go home paying three cents a unit more than what we can get in Georgia. Sort of a Far East version of what we do. Don't tell me how to run my business. Dad, all I'm saying is it's my play. Let me make it, okay? David. You are witnessing lesson number 28 in the Eli Sternberg School of Kovetching and Guilt. Why do we have to go through this Michigas all the time? Just, just trust me, will you, will you please? 70 cent ceiling? All right, all right. I personally guarantee a 70 cent ceiling. I have a flight to catch. Catch? Bye-bye, Uncle Phil. Baby. Honey. I'm trusting you to protect my father from himself. Honey. I'm still undone. So what's your connection with Elrose, Vinny? Security. That's an interesting job description, simple and to the point. Yeah, that's me. You expecting a late delivery? Late delivery? Hey! Hey! Come back here, you gunner! You dirty, no good him like you! Come back! Come back! Come back! Come back! Eddie, bring the car! Bring the car! Are you okay, Vinny? How bad is it? What did you hurt? We better get him to the hospital. Take him. Here, lift him up. Wasn't that one of Pinzola's drivers? The man almost got killed, and you're worried about one lousy dress? Nobody takes from Eli Sternberg. That's it, isn't it? It always has to be about you. Eddie, Roosevelt Hospital. Problem. 
Got clobbered by a cab. You all right? I don't know. I think I might have a broken leg and some cracked ribs. They're gonna take me down for some x-rays. I'll be right over. No, no, no. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. You'd be better off finding a way into that Penzola banquet. There's gonna be some guests that we should have on our Christmas card list. Think you can wrangle an invite? Yeah, I think I know a way. Okay. We've gotta go. I gotta go, Frank. Come on. Oh. Hold up a minute. Hey, thanks for getting me here. It was no trouble. I'm good hands now. You don't have to hang around. I'd do anything to get out of one of those boring banquets. I'll bring you some real food when you get back. Okay. We'll see you later. Okay. Hey, Jack! Hello, Jack. I have my favorite newspaper columnist. Just get a drink. Oh, he's wallowing in his element. Any problem getting in? No, the name was on the guest list, just like you said it would be. Excuse me, gentlemen. Could I have a uh, ginger ale, please? Thanks. Well, looks like they rounded up the usual suspects. Benny Boza, Borgness Transport. Ravel Jones from the mayor's office. I think you know the rest of the cast. Yeah, it's a real all-star crew. Can't tell the players about the program. Huh. Well, now there's a lovely couple. Rick Penzola and Matt Borkowski. What has the head of the Harbor Commission so bent out of joint? Borkowski is running for mayor. Where's this loony been? He is nuts. I always thought he did take one too many shots to the head when he was fighting golden gloves. Lucky for him, he's a better politician than he was a boxer. That the reason for this mating, Dan? Yeah, from what I hear, Gonzola promised the bankroll a big chunk of Borkowski's mayoral campaign. He pulled out at the last minute. Which means Maddie has got to scramble if he's going to fill his war chest. Maybe Gonzola doesn't want a mayor that smells like a cheroot. What he doesn't want is a harbor he doesn't control. You control the harbor, you control New York. It's a very simple equation. Bukowski understands it. He doesn't have any fancy degrees, but he's a master of street politics. Why doesn't Penzola move him up in class? Please There's a reward seated. for services rendered. Penzola's got to find another puppet first. No. The waiting must drive Bukowski nuts. If he thought he could get away with it, he'd pound a dock spike through Penzola's forehead. Welcome, everybody. As you know, we are all part of a singularly unified, holistic community called 7th Avenue. Tonight, we honor the author of that bon mot, Rick Penzolo, as GMTA Man of the Year. Dad, I thought you said you were going to get some real food. This is real food. I went all the way to the Carnegie to get it. Beats the hell out of the rubber chicken they're serving at the GMTA dinner tonight. Yeah, well, I thought that dinner was a little bit far west of Fifth Avenue for you. Oh, you mean now that I'm such an important macha on Wall Street? Yeah. You sound like my cousin David. Sometimes I think he doesn't realize I'm all grown up. Oh, I've been going to those garment district dinners since I was a little girl. Now, all those men who used to want me to sit on their laps want to crawl into bed with me, literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. Well, you sound like you get some satisfaction out of that. You bet I do. Normally, the family Sternberg only leaves psychological scars. Yeah, I thought I detected a little iciness there. Try glacial. I don't think he even notices. My mother? She wouldn't even stay in the same room with him. Goes back a long way between you and Eli, doesn't it? I used to hide when he came over to our house to see my father. How long's your father worked for Eli? Eli worked for him. The business was my father's. Eli was his salesman. 
My father was first starting out. He was servicing one small army contract. When the war broke out, Eli parlayed that one contract into dozens, all with his name on them. By the time the war was over, my father was working in Eli's cutting room. The shop was called Elrose. Didn't your father realize what Eli was doing? My father doesn't know business. I do. Okay. I better go. Okay. Simple and to the point. In my business, I don't wait around for an invitation. You take what you want, or someone else will. Oh, what are you doing? I thought you got paid to be rough. Good night. All right. Thanks, Hank. That wraps it up for the speeches. Now we dance and enjoy yourself. Hold it. I have something I want to say about about our honored guest, Eli Sternberg. Folks might not know that our honored guest, uh, Rick Pinzola, was mugged on the way here to the banquet tonight. He gave the guy a C note and then took back 12 bucks. And the guy says, hey, what the hell are you doing? And Rick said, I always take 12% off the top of any business transaction on 7th Avenue. And I'm sure a lot of you folks don't know that Rick is a big art collector. Art Stein's trucking firm, Art Warnick's manufacturing company, Art Broadman's assembly plant. You know, in the Garmin district, we have a favor for favor system. You do Rick a favor, and he does one for you. He lets you walk without crutches. Wonderful human beings. Right. You think you could give me a minute? Thank you. Well, how are you feeling? Uh, well, I can't walk. I can't breathe, but other than that, I'm okay. That's great. Just great. Look, here's a list of people that were at the banquet tonight. It's a souvenir program. Some very interesting people took out ads telling Rick Penzola what a terrific guy he is. Yeah, some people say anything. Well, there are a couple gentlemen there tonight that didn't re-up in the I Love Rick Penzola fan club. Your friend Eli and a guy named Matt Burkowski. Well, oh, a guy from the Harbor Commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. Human snowplow. Now well, he was in Pinzola's face big time tonight. And then Eli barbecued Pinzola in his pre-dinner speech. Oh, man. Yeah, it's me, Eli's toying with a cobra. With Pinzola, it's not if he'll strike, it's when. I promised David Starnberg I'd protect his father. That's a promise I can't keep. Vinny, I'm thinking of putting somebody else in. Well, who are you gonna get, Frank? Pinzola is smart, he's thorough, and he's cautious. The only reason I got close to him is because I got a history that he bought into. Well, now, do you think that you are the only one that has a history? Where's Mr. Terranova's room? <clears throat> hey, Rick. Do you hear what happened tonight? No. Oh. Eli Sternberg used tonight's dinner to link me to a past that I have distanced myself from. I don't enjoy being humiliated in front of 500 people. Yeah, well, Eli still got a rash from that trucking deal you stuck him with. His old deal was a gift from my father. 
He's choking on your rates, Rick. Before we left for the banquet, one of your drivers stole one of Eli's dresses. He thinks I had something to do with that? Well, he's got a siege mentality. There is this assumption on 7th Avenue that all problems stop at the revolving door of my lobby. I have my own particular problems. Eli lost one dress. I lost six trucks in the last two months. Now, I want you to get somebody to sit on Eli. I have a partner, but he's busy. Do it. Pinzola just left us the opening we need. I'm going to put somebody else on the inside. Who? The only man I know that even comes close to being in your league. John Henry Raglan. It's been a long time. Six years, three months, two weeks, and five days. But who's counting? Hi, Frank. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you, John. Yeah, you too. Well, you've changed. No, this is who I always was. Raglan, you remember? It's just a role I played. I need you to play it again. That ended when I left Phoenix. I don't need to spend another minute in the company of crazy people. Are you happy running a computer all day? It has its moments, yeah. You're satisfied with electronic stings. I'm satisfied taking long walks with my wife, my second wife. And I'm satisfied driving up to Baltimore to watch ball games with my son. The son my first wife didn't stick around to help me raise. And I'll tell you something else while I'm rattling on. I'm satisfied with my dreams now. Used to be that all I dreamt about was how that reporter looked after they blew him up. Remember, Frank? Well, Phoenix could do that to you when I was there. And I don't need to put myself through that kind of hell again. I mean, it took three years for my palms to stop sweating. John, you're as good as I've ever seen. Yeah, well, I was good enough to get out from undercover in one piece. Four more years inside, I got my pension, Frank. Your pension? You know, I spent enough time with you to know you didn't become a cop just to survive. You want to send one big message to the crap out there that think they're beyond the law. Well, I'm offering you the chance. You ever heard of Rick Penzola? A kid? But a kid is not a kid anymore. He's all grown up. He controls the New York Garment District. We had an agent under with him, but he, uh... Killed? No, hit by a cab. It was an accident. But we need somebody to take his place until he can get back on his feet. Maybe I can dig somebody up who knows the rag trade. The rag trade, John? I read a lot. No? Uh, no? Well. Read this. This is Rick Penzola's empire. It's an industry that generates $20 billion annually, and he's bleeding it dry. The solid lines indicate people and businesses we know he's connected to. The broken lines are suspected connections. Doesn't look like you laid a glove on him. Oh, Penzola's never been arrested, much less convicted. The agent we had under got next to him. How'd he manage that? A gentleman named David Sternberg approached us. He's the son of Eli Sternberg, the president of Elrose Fashions. Now, Sternberg's had a run of bad luck, ran into a cash flow problem, had to go on the street for two million. Now, our agent... Give him a name, Frank. Vincent Terranova got things straightened out for the Sternbergs, so they're off the hook for the loan. And Benzola hired him as some kind of a double agent, so he'd keep an eye on them. Wait a minute. This David Sternberg came to you, right? Does he know who Terranova is? That's great. That's just great, Frank. He approached us, John. Do I have to tell you what could happen to an agent who doesn't have complete cover? Damn it, Frank, do I? No, you do not. So then why'd you bother bringing me down here for this dog and pony show? Because you did not go out on a win, John. Raglan. I know you from somewhere. 
I did time in Leavenworth with a cousin of yours, Jackie Mosca. Jackie Mosca? <laughs> oh, yeah, old Jackie. He always courted trouble. That's a romance I can't afford. You don't look like you travel in those circles. I dwell in possibility. You, me, and Emily Dickinson, right? But sometimes reality intrudes. Eli Sternberg is a reality. He's my next stop. But Vinnie thought I should visit you first, as a courtesy. Any special requests? Terranova's beeper survive? No. Just do your job for Eli. Keep your ears open. Come when you're called. Ragman. Just because I went to an Ivy League school, that doesn't mean you get to quote poetry to me. So much for lively repartee, huh? Who is John Henry Raglan? The Secretary of State arrived in Brussels today for a meeting of NATO defense ministers. Topping the agenda is a call for a reduction in NATO forces and nuclear armaments. This Excuse me. I'm looking for Mr. Eli Sternberg. You can't be disturbed. Vinnie Terranova sent me. Oh. In there. Thank you. What are you saying? It's out of the question. They got airports, don't they? The hell with closed down. This is my son we're talking about. Sternberg. I told you before. David Sternberg. S-T-E-R-N-B-E-R-G. His name isn't in hospital reports? You? I'm Vinnie Terranova's associate. You don't have any? What happened? There was a bomb in the hotel where Eli's son was staying. Uh, terrorists in Sri Lanka. Is he hurt? We can't find out. Oh, who's he talking to? State Department. I don't want to know about no phone service. What is your name? I say, what is your name? I need your name so I can call your superiors and tell them what an idiot you are. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? You incompetent bastard. They're not keeping me out of banana land. Nobody can get in. What can we do? I'll charter a plane and fly it up their noses. How can they stop that? Shoot me down? Who the hell is that? John Raglan. I'm Vinny's replacement. I never want to tear an over around. I don't need you around. Maybe I can help. Yeah, by leaving. Let me make one call. This one doesn't look like you could make a muscle. This is Raglan. You got a list of victims yet in that hotel bombing in Sri Lanka? Anything at all on a David Sternberg? What about his room? Was it hit? Anything else? Okay, thanks. I'll be in touch. Bomb went off in the hotel bar. Anything about my son? You gonna let me finish? Bomb went off in the hotel bar. Apparently, his son's room wasn't touched. Who told you that? Someone I can trust. And are they always right? Up until now. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry. I apologize for blowing up. It's just that I'm scared. Are you telling me this guy's in already? I told you he's good. He's in place till you're 100%. In fact, I'll be out of here inside a week. What, Oral Roberts is going to pay you a personal visit? All right, so who is he? You never heard of him. Then where's he been? He's been inside working with computers. The job screw him up? The job is hard on everybody. Yeah. Uh -huh. It bent them, didn't it, Frank? 
Eli, why don't you go home already? Go home to what? A shit's a wife who fakes concern like she fakes an orgasm? No, I'm staying here. Did you tell his mother? Rose is in Florida. Why alarm her until I have more information? Because she's his mother. Uh, you remember when she used to bring David here when he was, what, four or five? <laughs> he thought this was a playground. He used to crawl under the table picking up scraps of material. He was probably looking up the women's dresses. And the laughs he got with his jokes and his funny faces. He was smart right from the beginning. A son to make his father proud. I was blessed. So why don't you ever tell him? He knows. Don't you think he knows? No, I don't think he knows. Carol, please, this isn't the time. I'll tell you how much I love him, Carol. When he gets home, when he walks through that door, I'm giving him half of this business. He becomes a full partner with me. It's a beautiful gesture. What if he's dead? Phil. What if he's dead? No, 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 you are here. I'll belong you. Yeah, I'll show you around. You don't enjoy family angst, Mr. Raglan? I never thought of it as a spectator sport, that's all. Oh, this is no sport. My father is in there consoling the man who stole his business almost 40 years ago. You know what it's like to watch your father play the fool? Whoa, lady. Eli made my father beg for everything, and then he throws it in his face every chance that he gets. You should talk to someone about this problem you've got. It's no problem. It taught me life's most important lesson. If you're not in control, you're nothing. All news, all the time. This is WINS. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Good evening. Martha Elliott at the top of the hour with tonight's news. Our main story remains the hotel bombing in Sri Lanka. Let's hear from correspondent Duncan Trevor reporting from Thailand. Investigators continue to comb the wreckage of the luxury hotel in Sri Lanka, where a terrorist bomb today killed three people and injured 27 others. A Tamil revolutionary group has claimed responsibility for the bombing. Three Americans reportedly died in the bombing of the Palace Court Hotel. State Department officials have yet to identify any of the victims. David. Dear Mom, well, I'm too old for steakhouse. No offense, Mom, but here I am anyway, eyeballing the harbor because somebody's been hijacking a mob guy's trucks. Don't worry, I didn't volunteer. Ha, ha, ha. A cab broke up my best undercover man and his replacements working the other end of the deal. As for me, your darling son, I got the booby prize. Oh, come on, Frankie. You can stay awake, big guy. You can do it. You can do it. Oh.
lights. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna find out. You're mine. do for you, Frank? Plate number. X-ray. Harry. Nancy. 630. You got anything else on David Sternberg? No, I'm still trying to end around the State Department. All right. That plate belongs to one Seamus J. Devlin. 8855 Schiller Street, Queens. He's a Harbor Commission cop. He's a harbor cop? Yeah, 18-year veteran. He's got a handful of bravery citations. Medal of Valor, currently assigned to Commissioner Borkowski. He works for Borkowski. A drawer full of medals wasn't enough for his old age. Thanks, Uncle. Yes? I stopped down at the corner deli. Picked you up some coffee. That's very nice. Thank you. A bagel stew. <laughs> no, that'll be fine. Do you have a good relationship with your father? Good relationship? Good father. Nice. I never took my David to a baseball game. Why not? Oh, too busy. I thought it was more important to be here earning money. Sounds like an excuse to me. Really? Well, I clawed my way out of Flatbush, and I swore I'd do anything not to go back there. Hmm. The night David was born, I was out on the dock. Loading the trucks myself. I drove a delivery van to that hospital. And I held that little person in my hands and I vowed that he'd have everything I never had. And I made good that vow. But if he's not here to run this business after I'm gone, that means my whole life was for nothing. If he comes home, you'll have a chance to tell him. I'd give every dime I have for that chance. He's ripe for the taking. Elrose is in turmoil. Eli isn't even paying any attention to the business, and the plant is closed down. You're not exactly grief-stricken over your cousin, are you? You don't have an inkling about my feelings for David. But not even David can change the way I feel about Eli. These things have a delicate balance to them. You tip that balance, the slightest fraction, and the whole thing could come crashing down on us. On Wall Street, when you see a weakness, you capitalize on it. Strike hard and fast. Now, I say we move in now. No, we stick to our regular agenda. Zmart, Vetrano, and Mr. Chin. You know what we're talking about? We're talking about $200 million. Now, if jealousy be a natural byproduct, well, that's fine. So be it but I will not have emotion be the driving factor in any of my business deals. Was there anything else you wanted to discuss? You're acting like a typical guinea.
Hello. Dad. David. David, where are you? Dad, I'm okay. No, I'm, I'm, I swear, to, I'm fine. Yeah, no, I'm in Hawaii. We thought you were dead. I, I didn't find out about the bomb till I, I flipped on the news here in my hotel. Listen, Dad, I closed the deal. David. David. Dad, Dad, you hear what I said? I closed the deal. Oh, yeah. Uh, what did you close at? Dad, I had a grease a business agent about 2,000 bucks. Did you get our price? 75 cents a unit. I thought we agreed to a 70 cent ceiling. You should have stayed there till you got it. Now, I need you back here. Get on the next flight. Bill, open the plant. We got a deadline to meet. And you, you're getting paid for doing more than just delivering coffee around here. I want those trucks moving now. Brave and fly, go CB! Go on, go on, you go for it! Go for it, I just as soon shoot you as look at you! You just stepped in it, Devlin. All right, get him out of my sight. Devlin, there is no road cop heaven. Give it up. Oh. You know, you make me wish I was a bounty hunter. Your client's future is pretty well defined. Loss of job, loss of pension, public disgrace for his family, and at least five years in maximum security prison. He still needs a reason to cooperate. His prison time can be cut. I'm not rolling over. I'm not, damn it. And what do you think Bukowski's doing? Running for office like he always does. You're fishing, Vic Pike. But Bukowski for air. is dumping all over you. You gonna take a fall for him? Is he worth it? Ran you like an electric train, didn't he? He's my boss on the Harbor Commission. That's the only weight he carries with me, fat slob. Geez, that's not what he says. It says the hijacking ring was your idea. You believe that crap? It's the only crap that I have to believe. Now, you know how the routine works. First guy to cop a plea walks. The way I see it, you and Bukowski are in the home stretch together, and it doesn't make any difference to me which one of you hits the finish line first. Answer the man, Devlin. Come on, Devlin. Now, you went native. Don't go simple, not now. Let's say we get this on tape. I don't know what gets into a man like this. First, he forgets his wife's birthday. Then he tries to hide his shame in a bottle. And then, when that doesn't work, he tries to make amends by stealing one of Eli's dresses off the back of one of my trucks. The very truck from which he earns his living. Do you know what my father would have done? My father would have chopped off the hand you used to betray us. What about you, Raglan? What would you do with our dear friend, Mario? Tell his wife so she can kick his butt. No. Take him to Eli and see that he apologizes. And then tell Eli that he is never again to embarrass me in public. Let's go, Mario. Excuse me, Matt Brokowski. Do I know you? No, but you're going to. Frank McPike, OCB. Let's uh, take a walk, all right? Mm -hmm. Cup to go, Maggie. Black. Devlin's lying. He's running some kind of a game on you. Yeah, well, I got a source that corroborates the story that Pinzola cut off your water. 
They got campaign contribution laws. <laughs> and from a Guinea gangster? Hey, I wouldn't talk to the man about the price of a phone call. Pinzola's a freaking sewer. You didn't have any trouble communicating at the Truckman's banquet. Look got your nose so been out of joint. That, that wasn't anything. Nah, that's not that. What's a million bucks? Hey, I told you. No, I'm gonna tell you. You're facing grand larceny charges, sport. You're gonna do time, you're gonna do hard time. You don't play ball with me. You got a house of cards, McPike. I blow, and it falls down. You really think so? Devlin's on tape about the forged documents to use to get the hijacked goods out of the country. Don't be stupid. You give us what you got on Penzola, you walk. All I got from Penzola was promises. Tomorrow, Maddie. Next week, Maddie. Next election, Maddie. I mean, got so my heart was jumping out of my chest wondering how he was gonna stall me next. He ever give you any money? I told you. Just promises. Any witnesses to your conversation? We weren't doing this for posterity. Then you got problems. Take him downtown. Son of a bitch! It's my own damn fault, you know that, McPike? I never should have done business with cops because you're all the same when you get caught working the wrong side of the street. Oh, you got this thing about still wanting to be straight shooters. So you roll over like dogs doing tricks. Geez, I'll remember that. What have you got for me? I'm in a hurry. Say hello to Mario. He works for Amici Trucking. See the one? The one and only. I'm sorry, Mr. Sternberg. I got drunk on my wife's birthday. You got drunk and I lose goods? And Terranova gets run down in the bargain. Why didn't you come to me? I'd have given you six dresses. But you think it's easy to be a thief. Get out of my sight. Get out of here! Did Pinzola send him? Yeah. Along with the message. Oh, what? Don't ever embarrass him in public again. He said that. Pinzola said that. <laughs> well, he's got his eight and two shipping rates, doesn't he? Then I've got the right to say anything I want. If he doesn't like that, he can go to hell. Borkowski took my trucks. He says they uh, were for a campaign contribution that you promised and you never delivered on. It was uh, for a million bucks, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't buy politicians, Mr. McPike. Uh -huh. You know, that's not what Borkowski says. If I recall his words properly, you're a freaking sewer. You came here to tell me that? Boy, you guys are unbelievable. You see the vowel at the end of my name? You know who my father was. And you believe this Judas who has betrayed the public trust. You buy into his lies about a respected businessman who has never had so much as a ticket for spitting on a sidewalk yet. But you have spit on the sidewalk, haven't you? And gouged money, taken kickbacks, let workers be abused, even bought a politician or two. You'd better leave and take your wish list with you. The harbor's not yours anymore, Mr. Pinzola. It's mine. Hey, get out. You don't like this, do you? Well, good. I'm glad you don't like it. Because every minute that you're awake, I want you to know that I'm out there trying to slap your tail in jail with a bunch of animals that'll do more than wipe that smug look off your face. Okay. Thank you for your candor, Mr. McPike. I want you to know that everything you have just said has been videotaped, which should give me the makings of a pretty significant harassment suit. You're a worm, Ricky. I'm a worm, okay. There are three cameras in this room. I think your last statement was probably picked up by the one hidden in that painting right there. This picture? Yeah. There's no way Bukowski skates. We got him cold. The harbor cops, too. You know, Pinzola's a different story, but I think I started the ball rolling. You took it too far too fast. Pinzola ticked me off. That's great, Frank. You rattled his cage. Now I've got to crawl in with him.
I'm John Henry Raglan. I thought we'd better talk. You're not going to like it, but I need to know everything you can tell me about this case, because it's mine now. <laughs> 